Hey, space lovers, welcome to Blast Off, the Nat Geo Kids and Lego City show for fans of microgravity. Three, two, one. I'm Jedida Eisler, an astrophysicist, and we are going to be talking about Mars exploration how it feels to be inside a rocket launch, how to do a spacewalk, how to eat, sleep, and go to the bathroom in space. Everything you'll need to know before you start your mission to Mars. But first, let's meet our rookie astronaut in training. Jimmy, are you there? Hi there, Jimmy Brickstrong, astronaut in training, reporting for duty. So glad you could join us, Jimmy. Are you ready for your first mission to Mars? I was born ready. Are you sure you're ready? Me? Super ready. But I could maybe use a refresher on a couple of little teeny details like how? we get up there? Well, that's a great place to start because it's very difficult to prepare for going to space. Ah, there's the training alert. Let's go see what's going on. This is Bob, the demo guy. He's our resident expert science tester. Bob, what you doing? I get it. Bob's showing us what G-force is. G-force is the feeling you get of being pulled in a certain direction when you're speeding up, like when a plane takes off or on a roller coaster. If you grab onto a pole like Bob and spin around it, you can feel the G-force pulling you away from the pole. The faster you spin, the stronger the G-force and the harder it is to hold on. So how is G-force gonna affect Jimmy when he lifts off for the first time? Come on, let's go see. To get into space, we first have to leave Earth in a rocket like this one. Some rockets can be taller than the Statue of Liberty and heavier than 275 school buses. Your crew will be made up of about four astronauts. You'll all have things to do during the launch, but the rocket is mostly controlled by a big team of people on the ground. Go space team! On the day of the launch, you'll take an elevator all the way up 25 stories to the tip of the rocket where you'll be strapped in, lying flat on your backs and facing towards space. Full recline, nice. The fuel is ignited, blasting fire that's over 6,000 degrees. Space barbecue. Finally, it's the 10 second countdown. The boosters are pushed to full power. The gigantic braces holding the rocket in place fall away and then... We have liftoff. What Bob was demonstrating is what astronauts feel when leaving the Earth inside a rocket. In fact, during a liftoff, a rocket accelerates up to 17,500 miles per hour. That's five miles a second. And it creates a pretty high G-force. It's like having a gorilla on your lap. Never let a gorilla sit on your lap, even if he asks nicely. Then finally, we enter space. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, I'm ready. When will I get to Mars? Whoa, slow down. It's a long way to Mars. So you should get there in about nine months. Nine months, got it. So that's Monday, today, then it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Wait, nine months? Yeah, traveling to Mars is the same as going to the moon and back 75 times. Yeah, I'm gonna need to pack more pants. Anything else I should know? <laughs> well, life in space is pretty different. You'll be in a very small space with just four other people, so it's essential you learn to be kind and considerate. Even simple tasks can take a lot of planning. That's why you're going to learn more about what it's like to actually live in space. Yeah, that's right. I'm actually gonna live in space. I'm gonna be a spacer. Uh, spacian? Spaceite? Well, space lovers, we've learned a lot already, but we're just getting started. Let's explore some more. Astronauts still have to do all of the usual stuff we do here on Earth, but in space, it's a little different. Now let's look at the awesome, fascinating, and weird stuff that astronauts do every day when they're in space. Wait, where's Jimmy? Jimmy Brickstrong reporting for Goody. Glad you could make it, Jimmy. We were starting to miss you. Sorry, I was just getting ready for the day ahead, you know. Perfect. That's exactly what we're going to talk about now, our simple daily routines, but in space. What, like brushing my teeth? That's space stuff? Yeah, that's a routine. And eating breakfast? 
Yep, that that too. What else? Right. Well, like. What? Come again? I I didn't hear you. I said pooping. Oh yes. Well, that's definitely an important routine too, and it's especially complicated in space. It's Bob's training alert. Let's go see what he's up to this time. Bob, what are you doing up there? Okay, I figured it out. He's showing us what it's like to be in microgravity. You see, here on Earth, gravity pulls you down. But in space, while gravity still exists, you feel less of the effect as you travel further away. So if you were to drop a Lego brick in space, instead of it falling, it would just float right there. Of course, we all know that on Earth, that what goes up must come down. Let's investigate a little further. This is the microgravity simulator, and this is the Lunar Gateway. It'll be your first stop on the way to Mars. A space station like this is made of small rooms connected by narrow tunnels, each with its own purpose. Solid motors reaching their peak chamber pressure. Controls look good. Life in space must also be planned around microgravity. Everything and everyone floats. Ooh, wow, that's so cool. I gotta try this. It is really cool, and it can be a lot of fun, but it's also very challenging. Why is there always gotta be a challenge? The crew can only have normal food items as treats, but their standard meals come in little pouches, so no need for plates. Perfect, I hate washing up anyway. Water also acts differently in microgravity. And then there's the toilet. Remember how I said everything in space floats? Well, that means everything. You're telling me in space there's floating poops? Uncool, Jimmy. Thankfully, space toilets have fans that suck your number ones and number twos right down into a plastic bag where it's safely disposed of. Whew. I was starting to think space wasn't for me. And when it's time for bed, you climb into tiny pods like this one. Without the effects of gravity pulling you down, it doesn't matter which way you sleep. Because in space, there's no such thing as upside down. It feels exactly the same, whichever way you face. Okay, so there's no such thing as up or down? Well, how about left or right? Wait, which way am I now? And if there's no such thing as down, then how do we get back down? <sighs> Jimmy, just calm down. You can still move in any direction you want. It's just that in space, you don't have the same feeling of being pulled down. Does that make more sense? Okay, I think I got it. So. Now do we leave for Mars? Not quite yet. We've gotten a good idea of how the day-to-day -day life will be out there, but the last part of your training is the most important, because next we're going to learn how you will finally complete your mission to Mars. This is too cool! I can't wait to get a selfie on Mars! They better have Wi-Fi up there. Well done, space lovers. You're almost ready for your own Mars adventure as fully qualified astronauts. So let's go! Now we're going to see how you'll explore space and the surface of Mars using the most advanced technology in the world. But we're going to need our favorite astronaut here. Jimmy Brickstrong reporting for duty. Wow, Jimmy, that was really prompt. Uh, you're looking comfortable. A real astronaut is always on time and always ready, especially since we're going to Mars. I cannot wait to get my tan on. OK, that's great. But you know for your mission, Jimmy, you won't be landing on Mars. It's a research mission, so you'll be exploring it from a ship orbiting above the planet. But how will we explore Mars without actually being there? With a giant magnifying glass? Is that even a thing? Wait, was I supposed to bring that? <laughs> no, 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 you won't need that, but you will be using some pretty awesome gadgets for your mission. Okay, now you're talking my language. But what about my sweet tan? I can at least catch some rays from outside the shuttle, right? Not exactly. Perfect timing. There's Bob's training alert. Let's see if he can shed some light on all of this. Well, I think what Bob's showing us here is the effects of our atmosphere. Atmosphere is basically just the air around our planet. It keeps us all warm by holding in the heat like a big jacket. And at the same time, it protects us by letting in just the right amount of the sun's powerful rays. But in space, there is no atmosphere to protect us. Which means that if you went outside when the sun is down, it would be minus 170 degrees. And you'd be instantly frozen like a popsicle. But if you went outside when the sun is out, 
you'd get the worst sunburn of your life. Let's go see what the pros do to stay protected in space. Space is one of the most challenging environments humans have ever traveled in. That's why we need amazing technology to travel and work there safely. For any missions into space, astronauts have to be able to go outside their spaceship to fix things from time to time. A real spacesuit is so strong, it can protect the astronaut from the super harsh environment outside the ship while they do their work. That's so cool. I'll take one of those suits, please, and maybe a spare. Do they come in yellow? Well, they're basically a human-shaped spacecraft, and they cost about $15 million each. Okay, that's a lot of money. Does it come with its own bathroom or something? Well, kinda, yeah. Astronauts have to wear a super high-tech diaper under their spacesuit. Some spacewalks can last up to eight hours, and there are no restrooms in space. But that's just one gadget. Scientists and engineers are always inventing new machines and devices to help astronauts go even further on their missions, like the Mars rover and the Mars helicopter. These are the latest space gadgets being developed by the best engineers in the world. Please tell me I get to drive that thing and fly that other thing. Well, let's hope so. These are just prototypes, but who knows what amazing gadgets you'll be taking with you on your mission. Maybe you can even invent some of your own. Wow, so much awesome tech, so much awesome stuff to see. I can't take this anymore. Am I ready? You know what, Jimmy? I think you are. Yes! Yes, yes, and yes again. Thanks to Dida. I've learned so much from you and Bob. I won't let you down. Bye, Jimmy. I wish you many amazing space adventures. And all of you space lovers out there, thank you so much for coming with us on our mission. Hopefully you're all feeling inspired and excited to learn even more about Mars and outer space. Until next time, ad astra, which is Latin for to the stars.